A playoff game in November. Bengals at Ravens. But both come in after head-scratching losses. And Burrow versus Jackson. Who do you want tonight? Let's go around that horn. Joe Burrow indicating it's a big game when he said, quote, it's a big game. <laughs> Lamar Jackson on how hungry this Ravens team is after last week's loss to Cleveland. How both these teams and quarterbacks come in not exactly beautiful, let down losses, turnovers late for both, and now the short week showdown. I'm looking for an argument for tonight's difference maker. Around the horn to David Dennis Jr. The difference maker here is fourth quarter performance. I think overall the Ravens are the better team, but they've been the better team all season against these uh, other teams. They still have three inexplicable losses. They have a to been trailing for a total of 28 minutes through the first 10 games. The only other teams to trail by that for that few amount of minutes is the uh, 98 Broncos and the 84 Dolphins, who have done pretty well wow. in their season. And yet the Ravens have three losses and three losses in which they had an 88, 90, and 97 percent chance of winning in the fourth quarter with a negative 15 percent DVOA during those fourth quarters. They have to do better in that fourth quarter. Meanwhile, Burrow comes in to this came into this season as one of the most clutch uh, pl uh, quarterbacks in the league. So this is about the fourth quarter and if the Ravens can figure this thing out. That may be the strongest opening <laughs> argument made on Around I the mean. Horn this season. And I want to let people know what's happening. David Dennis Jr.'s mom, Carolyn, is sitting three feet away from him off camera, <laughs> and she lit a fire under her son today yes, for points. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Ramona Shelver to you, tonight's <laughs> difference maker. I mean, I don't even know half those acronyms that he just cited, <laughs> what they stand for, but wow. <laughs> to me, this is about Joe Burrow, okay? They, they've done this the last couple of years, get off to a slow start. They get, they're finally clawing their way back in. I think they're the more desperate team, and they have, a, they have an advantage to, here because they're, the Ravens' best cornerback, Marlon Humphrey, is out. Joe Burrow does his thing. When they, when they get down early in the, in the season, they've gone on and they've rebounded in the second half, but their last eight opponents all have winning records this year. So this game is very important for Cincinnati. Mm. Frank Isola, same question to you. Tonight's difference maker. Yeah. Of, of course, you buried the lead, Tony. David's lovely mother said that I'm her number one panelist, so you left that part out. <laughs> For me, it's going to be Cincinnati. Frank it's going to be Cincinnati's defense. Last week, they gave up 544 total yards Woo! to the Houston Texans. The last time the two teams yeah. played, Lamar Jackson threw. For over 200 yards, he ran for over 50 yards. They were able to run the ball. Can Cincinnati's defense put up enough resistance to keep the Bengals in this game? That's going to be the key tonight. And Monica McNutt, tonight's difference maker. So I got to combine my last two panelists' answers. It's going to be health and the defense. It's not just about Joe Burrow's health. Sam Hubbard's out talking about that defense that Tony just, or excuse me, that Frank just wanted to yeah. praise. Not to mention, they don't have T. Higgins as one of their receivers, and they've given up 185 yards to scrambling quarterbacks. Oh, I don't know. I think that means Lamar Jackson is one of those guys. Not to mention the Ravens' run game as well. So to me, it's about the health of the Bengals, and I just don't think that they're whole enough to beat this Ravens squad. Mm -hmm. The debate on which quarterback you'd rather have in this particular matchup has been going on for weeks in anticipation for maybe the best Thursday night game of the year. Burrow or Lamar, Frank, who would you rather have tonight? Yeah, I mean, Burrow's been a Super Bowl long term. I would take Burrow tonight. I would take Lamar Jackson. Coming off a loss at home, able to run the ball against that defense, I would take Lamar Jackson. Ramona Shelburne. I mean, Lamar Jackson. And, like, ask Arthur Blank about this. He's going to forever revisit that quote about mm, whether you okay. for him or not. Okay, but like Lamar Jackson, you know, it doesn't matter who he doesn't have. They once he if they have Lamar Jackson, he wins, and he's shown that this David year. David Dennis Jr. Contract. I'm taking Lamar Jackson for the first three quarters. I'm taking Burrow for the last <laughs> oh. quarter. Three greater than one. Give me Lamar Jackson. Uh, uh, Monica, I'll give hedge. you the last word. Ah oh, man, I'm usually a Burrow girl, but I can't back down on my own argument. You got to go Lamar tonight. Okay. Seems like everybody has Baltimore tonight. David, you may be the one that was on the fence there because they were fourth quarter stats. Ramona, Baltimore? You know what? I'm going to go Cincinnati is the more desperate team. After, okay. Uh, after everything you just said, you did say that. And uh, David? <laughs> 
I'm going to go Baltimore. I think that if they can, uh, that defensive line and Lamar Jackson can have After a big After everything you just said, support, Monica, who you got tonight? I think there's continuity in my answers, Tony. I'm still going Baltimore. And Frank Isola. <laughs> yeah, I trust the Ravens defense guys, a little bit more, so I'm okay. picking Baltimore. You guys crack me up. We'll move on. <laughs> NBA now. Five-game suspension for Draymond Green. I had a panel yesterday, unanimous, that it had to be long. In fact, I think everyone argued it had to be longer than five games. I heard seven games. I heard ten games for both the act of choking and the history of Green. In the five games, Joe Dumars and the league said Green's past actions were factored in. Monica McNutt, around the horn to you. Is five fair? I thought five was perfectly fair, Tony. Not to mention this is also Draymond's fifth suspension. So past actions being included is also completely within the realm of decision making for the NBA. Look, we know that winning absolves you from a bunch of missteps and we all know how costly it was for Draymond to be suspended during the finals that the Cleveland Cavaliers went on to win ultimately. But for me, this has to stop from Draymond. Like this has to be addressed. You are on one of the marquee franchises in the league. This is too many eyeballs for the wrong reasons. Okay, but you think five is fair. I had Israel Gutierrez, for example, saying 10 games yesterday. Five games fair, Ramona Shelburne? You know, I'm surprised it was this high, to be honest. I thought it was going to be two or three. Mm. Because in the NBA, you're either suspended for a game or you're not suspended. I thought Draymond might get two because it's Draymond. But clearly, like, you have to know the history of Joe Dumars, who is in charge of these kind of disciplines, with Draymond Green. Those two go back to, to his college days in Michigan, at Michigan State. And, and I think Joe Dumars really wants to have a corrective punishment. Like, this isn't just five games because of the severity of the headlock on Rudy Gobert. This is five games because the last time he suspended him for that stomp on Sabonis, it clearly didn't get through enough to where he's not going to have an eruption like this again. I, you know, should the league be legislating like this? Should the league be in charge of corrective behavior and discipline? I don't know. That's up for debate. But the Warriors, all this talk about the Warriors, are they up for They just gave them a new four-year deal. Like, they just signed up for another four years of Draymond. Right, right. Okay, okay. I, I hear what you're saying. So you would put forward maybe an independent council to make rulings on matters like this. Frank no. Isola, you were shaking your head. You think the NBA needs to make a ruling here. How did five games come out to you? Yeah. Ram Ramona, I love you. You do a great job. But you're talking about history, and you're mentioning Joe Dumars' history? What about the history of Draymond That's Green, fair. who I think he, he punched a teammate and got zero games for that? And it's all about timing. David, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Adam Silver in the NBA is all in on the in-season tournament. Adam Silver last week said he wants everyone focused on, let's talk about games, let's talk about defense and offense that everybody plays. What was everybody talking about the other night? It was Draymond Green trying to choke out Rudy Gobert. His timing was bad. They should have done something to him 13 months ago, and it didn't work. Five games, more than appropriate. And David Dennis Jr. Five games is absolutely uh, appropriate, and I think the NBA kind of did itself a disservice by even talking about Draymond's history. Five games for choking somebody out in a vacuum is, is enough. He had Rudy Gobert in a chokehold and dragged him across the, the court. And, you know, people, his own coach was begging him to let go. You don't even need to talk about his past. You don't need to talk about the other incidents. Five games is enough regardless of who it is. Momo, I'll let you back in here. Look, in David Stern's NBA, this is how players were punished. In Adam Silver's NBA, it's been a lot lighter. But now, obviously, things are changing with Joe, Joe, Joe Dumars being in this position to make those kind of rulings. And I think Joe, you know, Joe Dumars played in David Stern's NBA. So Adam Silver's NBA, though, is throwing MVPs out, star players out for a slight flex in the baseline, right? I mean, that's what we saw just last week with yeah. Giannis. Monica, I'll give you another chance in here, too. That's a really good recall, though, Tony, because we do need to find some sort of consistency. Listen, here's the thing. Whether you look at this thing in a vacuum to Davis Point or Draymond's history, it cannot go unacknowledged in terms of the severity and, quite frankly, the circus that is surrounding it. For me, Draymond Dream Green, as a champion in this league, he's got to show progress that he's moving forward. I want to talk deeper old. about this because no basketball league wants to be known as the league that has a guy choking a guy out. But you saw the reaction the last 48 hours. Some NBA fans like this drama, some like villains. Golden State has accepted Draymond's particular set of skills to a certain degree. Should that still be the case, Momo? As long as he helps them win. I mean, that, that, that's literally the, the baseline. They, they know him. They have history with him. He is a winning player. He is the heartbeat of their defense and, frankly, the orchestrator of their offense as well. But he's the heart of their team. And so they, they tolerate a few of these eruptions. They don't like it. 
but they tolerate it because they understand him and he has history with them and he has four rings. So for now, they do. But when he stops being productive, I Frank, think you want to weigh in on that? I think as long as Steph Curry is there, I think Draymond Green's going to be there. I actually do think he's good for the league from this standpoint. People talk about him. He's a competitive guy. And oh, by the way, every, every Tom, Dick, and Harry has a podcast. His podcast is actually yeah. good because he's compelling. He's compelling both on and off the court. But again, he's totally out of line right here. Good podcasts don't win championships, though, right? I mean, so we have a player who was suspended <laughs> for a finals that led to the yeah. Biggest collapse in, in league history. We have now an instance in the previous playoffs, and right here, David Dennis Jr., is the strategy to let Draymond work his tightrope like he does, still working for Golden State. Yeah, we could talk about what should or shouldn't happen, but the fact is what is, and what is the is a Golden State Warriors team who has bought into Draymond and the circus. You could talk about them costing the uh, finals, but they won three more championships with him after that. They know that they are, you know, their best chance of winning is with him, and they're going to stick with him until that changes. David, last time we had you on, in your FaceTime, I believe, you guaranteed a Steph Curry MVP for this season. Since he's... That, since that, he's missed a game. <laughs> Golden State has lost every game. Green is choking people out. I'm not disappointed. Uh, I'm impressed with your Jinx capabilities, is what I am. <laughs> we'll be back. Fire yourself next. Around the Horn is presented by Bullet Frontier Whiskey. Around the Horn, coming to you from the seaport. Brought to you by Chase. Josh Allen on how he feels after his offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, was fired was fascinating. Take a listen. It hurts. It hurts a lot to, to see someone you care about. Um, go through a situation like that. Turnover-wise, it's it's abysmal when we lose. Um, there, there's no secret to that. So there's not a whole lot. Like it's not like it's broken. We're not we're not a broken offense. We're not a broken team. Ramona, how do you hear that? Look, they didn't tell him, and obviously that when you have a team that has expectations like the Bills have had the last couple of years and, and you're underachieving that window that we all thought was wide open when they had that game against the Chiefs a couple of years ago it doesn't stay open for as long as you think sometimes and this feels like one of those type of moves that you want to light a fire into your quarterback but I don't know how much of it is Dorothy's fault I think they don't have as much talent in offense as, as they used to sometimes you can scheme that up but you know somebody had to go just be based on how underwhelming they've been Dennis Jr. Yeah, this is Allen. He's down on himself, but he should also probably be down on that Bills organization. This move really did not make much sense. That offense scored 41 points per game this season when they win the turnover battle. Uh, their offensive coordinator was not causing those turnovers. That was on Josh Allen. So I don't know why you make that move to sort of cure that but is problem. is that not what you heard in the longer comments from Allen, that he knows this was about his turnovers? Monica McNutt, how did you hear the quarterback? <laughs> I, I just kind of wish he would have said it with his chest if he was going to take accountability instead of dancing around it. Yeah, it hurts, and you had a part in it. Whether the turnovers are your fault or your receiver's fault, your play was directly correlated. So I thought it was just kind of a standard answer to get out of it. I think as a quarterback, you could say, I don't agree with this move flat out, and he did. Frank Isola. Ken Dorsey's a scapegoat. There's no other way around it. If you look at the numbers, our offense is rolling. To David's point, they turned the ball over too much. And let's remember, his last game... As the offense coordinator, the offense gave the team the lead. Denver marched right down the field against that defense, just like the Giants did with Tyrod Taylor. The only yeah. difference was they kicked a the game-winning field goal when there were 12 men on the field. That's the offensive coordinator's fault? Right. Come on. Right. So none of that happens. Is Ken Dorsey still OC this week? And is Josh Allen, you know, yeah. still on, on a team that's headed for the playoffs? Yeah. We'll move on. Baseball. While MLB hands out awards for a season that feels like it was months ago, because it was a season that was months ago. Garrett Cole, Blake Snell, Cy Young. A report MLB could lower pitch clock with men on base next year from 20 seconds to 18 seconds. Games were 24 minutes shorter this year. Some players think pitching injuries were more prevalent because of pace. MLB refutes that. Frank, buy or sell shortening the pitch clock. The award should be on a pitch clock. Come on, from 20 to 18. You want to shorten the game? Don't allow the manager or the pitching coach to visit the mound. And when a guy comes out of the bullpen after you just warmed up for 10 minutes, let him throw two or three pitches. That's how you shorten the game. What they did this year was perfect for baseball. Did you say the awards should be at a pitch clock? Yes, yes, that is the accurate take. It feels like the season was years ago. Shelburne, get it going. Buy or sell this. 
Well, I want you to just close your eyes and just put Bob Ryan's face on, in front of me right now because I'm going to play the baseball traditionalist role right here. And I don't know why they needed to mess with any of the rules in the first place. I think when you watch the games, baseball is to be appreciated really? for you what feel it that? is. We don't, you don't need, think we never it was needed substantially to speed better it up. with 24 We minutes? never needed to put a runner in second. Okay. We don't need the switch. I don't like any of that stuff. If you understand baseball, you watch the games because it's a beautiful sport. David Dennis How Jr. Bob Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I'm selling this as well. The, the last season seemed to go well, and towards the end of that season in the playoff, nobody was talking about how long the games were. Everybody was just enjoying the games, and especially when you have a World Series where you have the most famous pitcher, uh, you know, was injured in that series. You don't want to run the risk of more injuries by lowering that pitch clock, and apparently players want a standard time uh, uh, no matter who's on base or not so had gone from 20 to 18 it seemed to in be inconvenienced to everybody you two put some credence into the idea that players think the pitch clock and the pace made injuries more prevalent to pitchers mcnutt how about you um i gotta sell it it feels like baseball's doing a whole lot and i don't necessarily know that it makes sense i mean even if you just do the math i think this is only talking about like seven minutes or something maybe less so it just feels like they need to let some things settle. Let Ramona mourn the former way the game was. Let I don't know, Ramona. The 24 role. minutes for safe. Sport. They went from three hours in, what, four to two, 40? That, that is one of the great changes in the history of the sport. We'll move on. Fire cell three, James Madison. Their appeal to be bowl eligible denied by the NCAA. There's still some hope for a bowl game because if there aren't enough 500 teams for the 41 bowls, JMU can still get in that way. But this is about the New Year's six bowls, as it was looking like this was going to be the highest ranked group of five, possibly. NCAA is saying no to that. David, is that fair? Well, this is the NFL, I mean, NCAA doing what it does best, which is accurately enforcing a really stupid rule that should not exist in the first place because their justification <laughs> makes no sense at all. They're saying that they need these organizations, uh, schools need time to make sure they're acclimated to their new situation. Well, if you're eligible for a bowl game, that means that you've acclimated to your situation pretty well. There's no need for this delay before you can be, uh, you know, in these Monica, games. Monica, a 10-0 team that's ranked in the top 20, not eligible for a bowl, the NCAA says. Well, since David nearly slipped and said the no fun league, I'm going to say the no creativity at all league in the NCAA. And I might lose points for this, Tony, hey. but please let me point this out. They want the long-term sustainability of FCS schools to be able to have increased scholarship, expanded athletes, compliance efforts, and additional academic and mental health support for student athletes. How do you raise money to do all that? You go to a big stage, you play in a bowl game, you get your donors excited. Did you go Come to the cue cards for that? Normally I, I would penalize Sorry. that, but you I know, but I, wanted to I have right. been searching why does the NCAA even have <laughs> this rule to begin with, right? Sure. And now, I mean, I, I, their proof in the cue cards, there was no proof. Go ahead, Frank Isola. <laughs> yeah, and they penalize the players. That's what you. That's what uh, bothers you the most. Here's what I'm going to do if I'm JMU. Talk to Jerry Jones, get Dion to bring Colorado to Dallas, we'll play our own game, and we'll see how the ratings oh, do, we'll see how many people show up. How about this that? Frank Isola solution-oriented. And Ramona Shelburne. <laughs> Remember a couple of years when another founding father school went to the final four in the uh, March Madness? George Mason, okay? Why, th this is what we love about the postseason tournaments. Hopefully, we get this change, we get the, we get the playoff. Teams like James Madison can go. Ramona Shelburne, Monica McNutt, thank you for your time today. David Dennis Jr., Frank Isola, showdown, next. He's got help, though, over there. David Dennis Jr., Frank Isola, good luck in showdown. It is official. MLB owners unanimously voting today to allow the Oakland A's to move to Las Vegas. A's owner John Fisher, quote, today is an incredibly difficult day for Oakland A's fans. Great day for Las Vegas. David, how should Oakland A's fans feel? How should A's fans feel? How should baseball fans feel? I'm going to start with how Oakland A's fans should feel. They shouldn't feel anything because they should not exist anymore. They've been slapped in the face for years by John Fisher, and they have talked about leaving that team and boycotting them. That should last more than this year. Let him figure out how to grow a fan base on his own. I, I love the idea of a smaller stadium. I think that's smart. I just wish there was somehow some way they could build it in Oakland. They've already lost the Raiders and technically the Warriors. That's a great sports town. They're all gone. This is just dirty business. I'll split the point. 
and I'll move on when your shot ends up in a spectator's lap. This was a, a fun moment from golf, and it's Rory McIlroy. Play it as it lies is what I was told at Happy Gilmore. Uh, they're not going to do that. How did Rory play this, Frank? Well, you're trying to get me in trouble here. How about somebody, probably the judge or the official, since Rory's playing, how about helping the young lady up for crying <laughs> out loud? <laughs> no, well, you yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you're right there. That's up. absolutely true. Hey, David. Oh. Yeah, this seems like it may be a little fun, but if that ball comes anywhere near my lap and you come approaching me with the ball in my lap and you have a club in your <laughs> hand, true, I am true. hightailing That's it and true, running true. as fast as I possibly can in the opposite direction. <laughs> Would it happen any other way? Mom sitting right next to David Dennis Jr. I'm a softie. You know it, Frank. Sorry. FaceTime David Dennis Jr. So for those of you who do not know, a few weeks ago, I was uh, guest hosting ESPN Daily, listening to the podcast of my son, and my son goes, hey, Dad, I think I could do that. I want to launch a podcast. So he did. He launched his own video gaming podcast called the Meat Cheat Pod. <laughs> it's wherever podcasts are sold. Go subscribe to and tell him how awesome he is. I'm so proud of you, dude. How great is that? Yes! This is just like Georgetown coach Ed Cooley yesterday. He went on a diatribe about... Young reporters, you got to be there. You got to ask the question. Young people want to break in the industry. Get your own channel. Although that's not just your son, David. That's Carolyn's grandson. That's right. Thanks, Mom.